bacteria hijack our mitochondria, not just to gain substrates to make new backbones, but also to gain amino acids, other nutrients that they actually consume, parts, key parts of survival. So what this means is that in infection associated chronic illness, if a person, and this is one of the central themes in those conditions, often a person I mean, gets an infection and then develop chronic symptoms. That's the central thing that's happening. And the pathogen that a person's case starts with or other organisms that are part of the disease process may often persist with the patient in their tissues and their nerves. And what happens is if those pathogens are there, they will continue to hijack our mitochondria over time to be able to continue to survive. And what that means is that chronic disease associated with infection or persistent infection is inevitably going to involve mitochondrial dysfunction. It will exhaust people as the pathogens that are in us, the ones that are detrimental to us, pull our energy substrates away from us and to them. So there, you know, what I think is most important as a takeaway is that people sometimes tell me, you know, let's say ME-CFS, which is a condition in which many people develop symptoms after infections or exposures. People will say, and I, I think chronic infection, for example, the enteroviruses or sometimes the herpes viruses, the persistence of those pathogens can play into cases of ME-CFS. I will sometimes say, I think pathogen persistence can contribute to ME-CFS. And some people will say to me, no, 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 no. It's a mitochondrial dysfunction disease. And I'm like, I know. Because those two things go hand in hand. It, it, it can be an infectious disease. And then by definition, it's going to be a mitochondrial dysfunction disease. So we can link the topic of infection and mitochondrial dysfunction completely 